This is section 4.3 and today we're going to do some right angle trig which actually is a lot of review from what you did as sophomores when you were learn, learning Sokotoa with right angles. Um, so it's going to be pretty much a refresh day. Hopefully you remember some of the stuff. Uh, we're just going to start with a couple of calculator issues though first. Um, we oftentimes are doing sine of like a degree or cosine of a degree which your calculator should be pretty set up to do degrees but a lot of the graphing calculators come automatically set to radians which is our other unit of measurement we're dealing with angles so I just want to show you how to switch that under the mode button um, your third option down you can toggle between radian and degree so right now we're in degree mode so I'm going to do sine of 62 and just make sure you do it in your calculator to check against mine and you should get about 0.88. And then for cosecant of 5 we had talked about how a cosecant is the flip of sine. So what we really want to know is the sine of 5 and then we want to flip that answer. Uh, this does not have a degree symbol on it which means we need to be in radian mode. So I'm going to go back to mode. I'm going to switch over to radian just by highlighting it and then hitting enter. And then I am doing 1 divided by the sine of 5. So I get about negative 1.04. So you might want to just add to your notes. You need to watch the mode that you're in for each problem that you're doing. Um, I would say probably 95% of the time it's going to be degrees. And then the other one or two times you're going to have a radian and you'll need to switch over. So there are two different types of... Uh, trig buttons that you have on your calculator. You have your regular row, your sine, cosine, and tangent, and those are from when you were a sophomore doing that Sokotoa stuff. This is all when you had the angle and you were finding a side. And then our inverses, which are right above them, our little inverses, this is the exact opposite. So we have sides and we're looking to find our theta. So we're looking to find our angle. So an inverse actually finds us an angle. Then we've got our three um, reciprocal functions, so cosecant, secant, and then cotangent. And these do not have a button on your calculator, because uh, remember, these are just one divided by their reciprocal trig function. So these two have buttons on the calculator. This one does not. You would just do one over whatever you're trying to find. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so just doing some quick Sokotoa problems. Remembering that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I always start off by identifying the hypotenuse, draw through the 90 degree angle, and you'll point to the hypotenuse every time. And then from the angle you're working with, that's where you want to identify opposite and adjacent. So from 56, the y side is the opposite side. And this one that has nothing, this would be the adjacent side. So we've got information on the O and the H, and that would be a sine function. So we're going to do sine of 56 degrees is opposite Y over hypotenuse 20. I'm just going to throw that over a 1 so that I can see that this is a cross multiply and divide problem. So 20 sine 56 is how I would suggest you enter it in your calculator. Here's why. Usually when you hit the sine button, it already throws a parenthesis up. So some students will do like sine of 56 and then they'll hit times 20. And that's not really what we mean. Oh, sorry, first I got to switch to degree. That's not really what we mean. What we need for it to be is 20 times the sine of 56. So I tell students if you put the number in front, then there's a smaller chance that you'll actually make the mistake of not closing that parenthesis off. The only other way you could do it is doing by sine 56 remembering to close the parenthesis off and then times it by 20. So 16.58. Uh, and your answer should be believable. You know, so if your hypotenuse is 20, it does make sense that this side could be 16. I really shouldn't all of a sudden get a side of like 1, or originally what we had had was 0.64. That shouldn't be happening. Um, so your answer needs to relatively make sense. Well, no, it needs to make sense. So through the 90, we get their hypotenuse from our angle, which we don't know. We've got adjacent, and this over here is opposite. Using A and H, that would be cosine. So I'm going to do cosine of the angle, which I don't know, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Since we're looking for the angle, we're actually going to move the cosine over, and this is when it turns into the inverse. And this is the one that has a button on your calculator. So cosine inverse 6 over 11. And we should be getting an angle measure so my answer needs to make sense in terms of, is that a believable angle measure? Is it believable that this angle is 54 degrees? 
Yep, it totally is. Number three, uh, across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. We don't have anything there this time. 32 over to 6 is opposite, and x is adjacent. So the only trig function we have that uses o's and a's is tangent. So we'll do tangent of 32 equals opposite 6 over adjacent x. This one's a little bit different. I'm still going to put my tan over a 1. We're going to do some cross multiplying, but this time I end up with uh, x tan 32 equals 6. So what I need to do in order to solve for x is actually to divide both sides by tangent of 32. And oftentimes when students see this problem, they want to do 6 divided by tan of 32. I'm sorry, they want to um, do th uh, tan of 32 divided by 6 because the 6 is with the x, so they just want to divide it off. But the x is actually in the denominator, so we kind of have to fix that problem first. So by actually physically cross multiplying and dividing, then we can see that what we really need to do is 6 divided by tangent of 32. And so I get about, oops, x equals about 9.6. All right, so now we've done a couple of those problems. So of course we need to do some word problems. <coughs> Trig is used a lot in math and in word problems. So a surveyor is standing 50 feet from the base of a large tree. Tree, surveyor, 50 feet away. The surveyor measures the angle of elevation to the top of the tree. So an angle of elevation, kind of how it's describing it, to the top of the tree, from where the person is standing to the top of the tree, they have measured that angle to be 71.5. Uh, we are totally assuming that the tree grew straight up and down, by the way. So that we've got our 90, and they want to know how tall the tree is. So using across from the 90 is our hypotenuse, across from 75 would be our opposite, 50 is our adjacent, we're looking at a tangent of 71.5 equals opposite, what we're looking for, over adjacent, which is 50. <coughs> Sorry, my light just went off. <coughs> so doing our quick math here, we've got a 50, sign, or 50 tan, 71.5. We get about 149 feet for this tree. Next up says, what is the angle of elevation to the top of LSHS? if you're standing 100 feet away and the 40 foot tall building. So you're looking for that angle of elevation. We're looking for that right there. So again, here's 90, hypotenuse, got nothing going on over there. Across from the angle is opposite and adjacent, so we're doing another tangent. But this time we're looking for the angle, so this is where we'll do the inverse again when we move the tangent over. And then we just need to do tangent inverse 40 divided by 100. We get about 21.8. And that was degrees, so we want to throw a degree symbol on there to make sure that we know that we just solved for an angle. Next up, we're going to do something called an angle of declination, slightly different than angle of elevation. Elevation starts at the horizon and goes up. Declination starts kind of at the horizon and goes down. So the angle of, what is the angle of declination from an airplane, here's the airplane, that is in flight, sorry, in flight, that is 7,000 feet above the ground and 20,000 feet from the airport. So we're looking for this angle of declination, which is right there. Uh, another common mistake when we're doing angle of declination is students will put the angle in here, but remember it goes from the horizon down, so it's kind of actually outside the triangle. But since we can create a little rectangle out of this whole thing, we could actually transfer our numbers to their opposite sides so that we can use this triangle instead, which is where our angle is at. So again, our 90 is there. Hypotenuse gives us nothing. Opposite is 7,000, so we're doing another tangent. And this is another inverse. Since we're trying to find the angle, we have to use the inverse function. And moving the tangent over to the other side lets us do that. So tan inverse, 7,000 and 20,000. So you get about 19.29 degrees. Last one says 200 feet from the base of the Lakeville football stadium. And I'm 200 feet away. 
<clears throat> the angle of elevation to the bottom of the flagpole. So there are flagpoles on the top of our stadium, if you've ever noticed them. And the angle of elevation to the bottom has been measured at 42 degrees. And then the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpoles, that whole thing has been measured as 45. So they would like to find the height of the flagpoles. What we really have here are two separate triangles. We have the first one with the 42 and 200, and this is just essentially the stadium. And then we have the second triangle, which is still 200 feet away, but the angle changes to 45. And this is the stadium plus the flags. So my job would be to find both of these values, and then I could just subtract. So if this is just the stadium, this is the stadium plus the flags, and I subtract the two, I would be left with just the flags. Then I could find out how, how, or how tall the flagpoles are. Another tangent question, 42, and we've got S and 200. And this one's also a tangent, and we've got S plus F over 200. So between my multiplying, I've got 200 tan 42. So I've got, oops, about 180. And then over here, and that's an S because that's our stadium. Here I've got 200 tan 45, which is 200. And subtracting these two would give me about 20 foot tall flagpoles. So the stadium plus the flagpoles was 200 feet. Just the stadium alone was 180, so I just subtract the two and I get 20. So that's our basic refresh on Sokotoa. Um, uh, I did write it right here. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent.